we bring to you the inspired word of God as you listen to the teachings and preachings of a servant of God, Hosanna David, preaching the end time gospel. Hello, I welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. It is my prayer that God will bless us as we look into his words today. Please share this video with someone and in case you have not subscribed, please subscribe and comment, like this video so that YouTube and Facebook can recommend this video to other people. I would like to get feedback from you to know. Let us pray. Father, thank you. We ask that you speak to us expressly from above. Help us to understand your will. Help us to follow you. Help us never to give up, O oh Lord. As we see the days growing dark and darker each day, every moment, Lord, help us cover ourselves, me, the speaker, and my listeners, with the blood of Jesus. We cover all our environments with the fire of the Holy Ghost. We come against every power of darkness, Lord. Let your word transform us. Lord, use me to speak to your children. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Today we're talking about our invitation to kingdom citizenship. The title is The Call to Kingdom Citizenship. And I want to take us back to the Old Testament. We have quite a number of scriptures to read today. A lot of people don't understand what Christianity is all about. Some people think that Christianity is just like every other religion. And they believe that, oh, you can be a Christian and live the way you like. But by the time we come to understand that Christianity is a kingdom, we will know better and behave better. Christianity is about the kingdom of God. The church is a kingdom. The church is not a religion. And that is one thing we must come to understand. It is a kingdom. And every citizen of this kingdom must take it the way God presents it to us. We are invited to be members of this kingdom. I want us to read some verses of the Bible, from the, mostly from the Old Testament, to see where we are coming from. I want us to look at some Old Testament prophecies about the church being a kingdom. Now we are being invited as citizens of the kingdom to partake in the commonwealth. But how many people are serious? I pray that the Lord will give us true understanding of his word. Please, um, Pay attention to the scriptures. I'm going to try to read as fast as I can uh, because the scriptures are many. So I don't want to be too slow. Daniel chapter 7, 9, and 10. I beheld till the thrones were cast down. And the ancient of these did sit. Please pay attention. This is the ancient of days. It, the ancient of days did sit. We are going to see the son of man too. One like the son of man. But this is the ancient of days. Whose garment was white as snow. And the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame. And his wheels as burning fire. Fairy stream issued and came forth from before him thousands thousand thousands ministered unto him and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him the judgment was set and the books were open 
let's continue. Now, let me uh, talk about this before we move on to other scriptures. Now, you can see that the throne of God was described and God himself, God the Father, was described. And then we are told that there are thousands, that means thousands, thousands, that means millions of people, accountable people, that ministered to him. Let's look at where the Son of Man comes in and have a true understanding of what the kingdom of God is. Verse 13, I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the class of heaven and came to the ancient of days. For those of you who say God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit is a wrong doctrine, that Jesus is the Father, Jesus is the Son, and Jesus is the Holy Ghost, you are wrong. Okay? God is one, but God is three in one. Just the way man is one, you are one, but you are three in one. You are Rachel or Joseph, the body, Joseph, the spirit, Joseph, the soul. Or Rachel, the body, Rachel, the spirit, Rachel, the soul. That is how God is to remember man was created in the image of God and in God's own likeness. Some people say, like the Jews and the Muslims, they say that Christians worship three gods. No, we don't worship three gods. God is three in one. So look at the scripture very well. Don't get confused. One, like the Son of Man, came with the clouds of heaven and came to the ancient of days, and they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion. We shall not pass away. And his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. Prevail against them. Um, so we see in this Daniel chapter 7, we're going to continue. We see Daniel chapter, in Daniel chapter 7, God the Father sitting on his throne, and one like the Son of Man came and was brought before him, before God the Father, the Ancient of Days, and judgment was delivered, and the kingdoms of this world were handed over to him. There was a kingdom that was established. And that kingdom came in the days of the kings. That is when that kingdom begins. So you as a believer, you should have this understanding that you belong to a kingdom. You are not just a church goer. This is about the kingdom of God. And in this kingdom, there is a way we must behave. There are those there are those and there are dons in this kingdom. So I want us to have this at the back of our minds. Now, let's go back to chapter 2 of uh, Daniel. Daniel chapter 2. Let's look at the prophecy through Daniel. Daniel chapter 2, 44 and 45. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed and the kingdom shall not be left to other people but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms remember in the days of these kings so when the prophecies say these kingdoms they are talking about the kingdoms that had been mentioned before now, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. For as much as the as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, 
and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold. The great God had made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter, and the dream is setting, and the interpretation thereof sure. So we see that in the days of the kings, God would set up a kingdom. And the kingdom will overthrow all the existing kingdoms. The God of heaven really did set up a kingdom. This is the same kingdom that was handed over to Jesus Christ that Daniel described as one like the Son of Man. Let's continue with the Daniel chapter 7. 7, 13, 14, 22, and 27. Until the Ancient of Days came, and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High, and the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom, and the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominion shall serve and obey him. Praise God. Remember, we have been called to be priests and kings in this same kingdom. The church is not a religion that was set up by Jesus Christ. The church is the kingdom of God on earth. I, I have tried to mention this several times, that it is not the day you die you, became, you become a saint. You are a saint. The day you give your life to Christ, the day your name enters the book of life, that is when you become, become a saint. So when you hear Paul writing to the churches and he addresses them as saints, he was not writing to dead people. He was writing to living human beings, to the saints in Corinth, to the saints in Galatia. So he was writing to living saints. You that is listening to me right now, you are a saint in this kingdom. And it is not also when you enter heaven that you enter the kingdom of God. No. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. John 3.3 3. Except a man be born of the water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. When you are born again, when you are born of the water and the spirit, you are admitted into the kingdom. As a matter of fact, baptism is the initiatory rite. It is the ceremony through which new members are admitted into the church, which is the body of Christ, the kingdom of God. In the Lord's Prayer, Jesus taught us to pray. And he said, when you pray, pray this way, Our Father, which art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. We should pray that the kingdom of God should come. Not that kingdom coming is not the reign of Christ on earth during the millennial reign of Christ. No. That is not what the prayer is about. The prayer is about the kingdom of God coming down with power on the day of Pentecost. The birth of the church is, is a day the kingdom of God descended on earth. And that prophecy in Daniel, Daniel chapter 2, verse 44. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up the kingdom. Which king? The Roman Empire, in the days of these kings, 
that were mentioned, the, specifically the Roman Empire, God set up a kingdom. And that kingdom is the church. Today, a lot of people see the church as a social gathering. But let me tell you, there is trouble on earth. And the only way out of this trouble is believing Jesus Christ and adhere to the constitution of this kingdom. And you will not be rejected on the last day. Take your spiritual journey seriously. Don't allow anything make you to give up. Because as we're talking right now, there is no time. No time. Let's look at Isaiah. I said I want us to look at Old Testament prophecies. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. So, Jesus was born by a virgin. Mary. And when he grew up, let me also bring God. This is a prophecy. Luke chapter 1, verses 32 and 33. He shall be great, and he shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Listen, when Jesus Christ came, there were existing kingdoms in this world. And from the time Jesus Christ came till he will come again, there will be other kingdoms existing alongside with this kingdom until the last judgment when Lucifer shall be bound and thrown into the pit of fire, the lake of fire. And those who followed him shall be cast into the lake of fire also. When Jesus Christ came, he preached a kingdom Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. John preached the kingdom. Jesus preached the kingdom. All John did, his whole ministry, was to introduce to prepare the heart of these people and introduce Jesus to the world. And he will say, it is time. The time is now. Repent. Repent. Come and be baptized. Wash away your sins. He prepared the heart of these people. And the people were kind of, what is happening? What is happening? Are we expecting a revival? Is, is it time for the Messiah to be born? And finally, the Messiah was introduced to the world. And what did he do? Mark chapter 1, verses 14 and 15. Now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Jerusalem, into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye, and believe the gospel. Jesus came and preached 
the kingdom. He did not come and preach prosperity. He preached the kingdom. A lot of people don't like my messages. Not because I preach lies, but because this is not what they expect to hear. But I tell you, whether people watch or not, I am obeying my master. This is my ministry. The years are ticking and I'm getting closer to going home. Day after day. Um, it doesn't matter how many people I preach to at a time. What matters is my faithfulness. How I spend the number of years that God has given to me. Was it according to God's instructions? And was I faithful? That is what matters. If you go online now, you will hear, Oh, miracle! Can I prophesy to you? And none of those prophecies are taking people into the kingdom. Hardly you see prophecies that elevate Jesus Christ. Most times, it is about the man of God. It is about the pocket of the ministry. Jesus Christ preached the kingdom. John came, preached the kingdom. Jesus came, preached the kingdom. So, what are you listening to? Are you among those who are listening to lies instead of listening to the message of the kingdom? Are you listening to the message of the kingdom? Or you are pursuing the things of this world? What are you pursuing right now? A lot of people are lost. A lot of people Billions of Christians are lost. They are pursuing the things that will not last. Living the very thing, the real thing, they have left it. And they are pursuing frivolous things. Many of them are just in church, but their, name, their names are not in the book of life. Imagine living in a country and your name, you have no national ID. You are not a citizen of the country, but you do everything. You pay tax. It is painful. Jesus preached a kingdom. And even the disciples were sent out to preach. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. That was a message he preached. Today, the kingdom is not just at hand, but the kingdom is here already. Kingdom is here already. And Jesus Christ said, in John chapter 3, verse 5, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom. Ever. This is the prerequisite of entering the kingdom of heaven, is to be born again. You have to be born of the water, which is baptism, and of the spirit. You have to be born of the word of God. If you are not born again, even if you go to church, you don't belong to this kingdom. If you are not born again, even if you participate and pay tithes, even if you give all your offerings, all your money, all your wealth, if you are not born again, you are not a member of this kingdom. Do you belong to this kingdom or you are just a church goer? There is an opportunity for you to accept membership, pass through the normal process. To become a member of this kingdom. Remember the topic again. Is the call to kingdom citizenship. Are you just living in this kingdom? Or you are a citizen of this kingdom? Jesus Christ is calling 
Day after day, he calls. He calls us to himself. He draws us to himself. There are things we must not do as citizens of this kingdom. Even look at normal society. If you kill and you are caught, you will pay for it. If you sleep with a minor, you will pay for it. If you steal, you will pay for it. There are things you do and you will be locked up forever till you die. They will sentence you to life imprisonment. Even though you are a citizen, even though you still have your citizenship card, your, uh, your green card is still in your head. You have your passport. But because you violated the constitution because you committed crimes that are entrenched in the constitution you will be sentenced to serve imprisonment there are times people misbehave and commit some heinous crimes sometimes they get killed they get fired they get executed. It is only those who have been deceived that believe that, oh, once you saved, you always saved. It is a lie. Do not believe that lie. A lot of people will be shot on the last day. A lot of people will be so shot on the last day. Now, let us look at a long passage of the Bible. Let's talk about one of the parables that Jesus Christ gave in Matthew chapter 22, 1 to 14. Jesus answered and speak unto them again by parables and said, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king, which made a marriage for his son, and sent for the servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding. And they would not come. Again, he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidding. Behold, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. But they made light of it and went their ways. One of one to his farm, another to his merchandise, and the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully. And slew them. But when the king held the rough, he was wrath, and he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their cities. Verse 8 following. Then said he to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were bidding were not worthy. Go ye. Therefore, into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, bid to the marriage. Verse 10. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. 12. And he said unto him, Friend, how camest thou in either not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then he said to the king, 
Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into the outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen. May this not be our portion in Jesus' name. So this is a king who prepared everything. Remember, Jesus made this parable because he wanted to depict how the kingdom of God is. He said, after he invited people, the people were not coming. And everything was set. The food, everything, music playing, everything was set. The son and the bride, the bride, the bridegroom, everybody was ready. But the guests did not come. So he sent to them, he sent servants to them, go and remind them. Some of them were killed. After the king revenged on the murderers, he said, now my servants go into the streets and bring in every one you see, as many as you can find. Bring them in. So they went and they brought, the Bible says, both good and bad. Hmm. But out of the good and bad they brought, listen, all of them wore uniform. When they came, they were told, well, even though it was a treaty, but this is how it works. Well, some of you were at the beer parlor, you were drinking. Some of you were at the brutal, you were prostituting. Some of you were tax collectors. Some of you were genuine people. So you come. Remember, these people did not go home first. It was in a hurry. It's not even if some of them went home, not all of them could go home to change their clothes. Meanwhile, not all of them may have wearing well, garments. But because it was an urgent thing, I believe the king provided wedding garments for all of them. That is why the man that had no wedding garment was cast out. Why are you not putting on your wedding garment? If the man couldn't afford a wedding garment and the king did not provide him a wedding garment. There wouldn't have been any need to punish that man. But the king provided everything. Just come and wear your wedding garment and come and be a part of this marriage ceremony. Just come, eat, drink. This is the kingdom of God. Everything has been purchased. Everything is ready. But are you ready? for this kingdom. Who is ready? Who wants to be a partaker of this great kingdom? Are you ready? Are you among those who are making money of the name Christianity? Or are you among those who are laboring for the kingdom of God? Are you among those who have given up their Christian belief and are living their lives the way they want. Are you putting on your wedding garment right now? Or you are among those who don't care? The fact that a man of God declares you righteous doesn't mean you are righteous before God. The Roman Catholic Church has a way of declaring people saints. Could just see someone and declare the person, oh, because you have done this in the church, or because you, they may not even be Christians. They have a way of declaring people saints. Maybe because of some heroic deeds, but will that make that person 
get to us before God. I feel so sad that upon everything that has been made ready for us, a lot of people are still going to the fire of hell because of unbelief, because of stubbornness. Some people don't want to put on their wedding garment. Some people don't want to put on their wedding garment. May the Lord God Almighty give us a grace. Please, it's time to repent. It is time to call yourself to order. It is time for you to know that the one who saved us is very much willing to help us until we get into heaven. Please do not play with your Christian life. Please do not joke with your salvation. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. We have been called to be citizens of this kingdom. Everything has been prepared for us. I don't know how you are living your life. Please give your life to Jesus Christ and be serious with your Christian life. Let us pray. Lord, help us. Everything has been prepared for us. Please help your children. Lift the burden of unbelief and faithlessness from their heart. Break every imprisonment in the name of Jesus and help your people to love you, help your people to follow you, help your people to know you more and more in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for as many who are in one problem or the other, help them. I pray for as many who want to renew their relationship with you. Father, please help them. Accept them into the kingdom. Those who want to give their lives to you, Lord, forgive them their sins and write their name in the book of life. I pray for those who are supporting this ministry. Father, support their lives. Help them, O Lord God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In any way they need you, in any way they are lagging behind, in any way they are facing scarcity, Father, attend to them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, thank you, mighty God, for answering our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please share this video with someone. And don't forget to subscribe if you have not subscribed. We encourage you to support our ministry. Please support us. It is what you give that we use in running the ministry and also funding a charity organization where we are children and scholarship and we are also running empowerment program and other programs that we are running. Please support us. God bless you. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to share this video. Don't forget to like so that social media can recommend this message to other people. See you next time. Bye-bye. We hope you were blessed by this message. For more information, visit our website, www.hosannadavid.com. Email us at info at hosannadavid.com. God bless you.